Hey guys, I think this is gonna be a fun video. Somebody commented, how did you render that animated shape? And then I responded, I did it in GeoGebra. I am so glad you asked. I'm thinking about making a video about it. This is the video that I'm thinking about making about it. If you wanna see the original video, I'll put a link right up there. It's about finding the shaded area of this figure. Let's make this figure in GeoGebra. And here's the GeoGebra calculator suite. This is not a paid endorsement. For the first step, we wanna click on tools. We're gonna to end up using the geometry tools to do this. And then we don't need this grid. Click on show grid and go to no grid. First, I'm gonna construct this vertical line that has a length of one. We can scroll to the bottom here, click more, and there is something called circle, center, and radius. So if we click on this and click in the center and then give it a radius of one, now we have a circle with radius one. And then if we go up here to intersect, click on the circle and the y-axis, it'll give us all the points where those two objects intersect. And this is the point I'm interested in. Now we can go to a segment right here, connect this to this, and we have a vertical segment of exactly one. And that's all I'm gonna need the circle for, so let's clean things up. We can go up here to the arrow button, the drag or select object button. We can click here, click on the three dots, go to settings, and we can hide the object. So now the circle's gone. And let's do the same thing for this point. We can hide this object, and let's hide these labels. And now we have our vertical side of length one. Next, we can do the horizontal side with the variable distance. To do the variable, let's click on this thing called slider and let's put it right here. For the minimum, we're gonna put zero because that's the smallest our value can be. And for the max, we're gonna put one because that's the largest it can be. And then we'll hit okay. It gives it the letter A. I don't think it likes the letter X because of the X axis. So we'll just have to remember that A is the same thing as X. And now to make this line, we're gonna construct a circle with radius A. So we'll go back down here to the circle center and radius. We'll click on that. We're gonna click on the center and we're gonna give it a radius of A. The A matches this variable up here. And right now A is one, but as I drag it, A gets smaller and bigger, smaller and bigger. Let's mark this intersection point again. So we'll say the intersection of the circle and the X axis. And now let's connect this point to this point with a segment to create the bottom side of our pentagon. And then once again, we can go up here and clean things up. We have the vertical side of length one and the horizontal side of variable length x. And we kind of have our y and x defined now. I think we can be done with the axes as well. Next, from this point and this point, we're gonna want two sides of length one. So from here and here, let's do two circles, each with a radius of one. We'll click here, there, radius one, and here, radius one. Now we know for sure the next two sides are gonna be a length of one, so they're gonna be somewhere on these two circles. If this is 0.6, we gotta find out where on these two circles are they exactly 0.4 away from each other, or in this case, where are they 0.7 away from each other. The trickiest part of this whole problem is how do we find where these should go? And let me show you. So for the next step, we wanna find out from here, where is this point we need to go to? And there's a really neat way to find it. Let's connect the diagonal from here to here. If we can find out how long this segment is, then we can make a circle from this point and find out where it intersects the circle from here. So how do we find out this length? If we recognize this is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, we can call it C and do Pythagorean theorem with these two sides. It's one squared plus y squared equals c squared. And then from here, we can square root both sides. On the right-hand side, we'll be left with C, and that's the answer to our question. This C is equal to the square root of one squared plus Y squared. Let's plug that in there. And let's clean this up a little bit. The one squared is the same thing as one. And then let's express the Y in terms of X. Since X plus Y is equal to one, in the place of this Y, we can plug in one minus X. And now we have our value for this distance, which will be the radius from this point. Let's click on the circle center radius, click on this for the center, and for the radius, it's gonna be one plus, and then one minus A squared. If you remember, A represents X, and then we're gonna do the whole thing to the one half exponent. One half exponent is the same thing as the square root. And now we can hit okay. As a funny coincidence, it ends up being right on top of this circle. Let's drag this a little bit. And now you can see they're a little bit different. So now let's find our intersection and we wanna connect this point to the intersection of this circle and this circle. So let's find the segment and mark that. 
So this is going to have a length of one. And now we got to find the last point, which is one from this point and y from this point. And y is the same thing as one minus a. So we're going to do another circle from here with a radius of one minus a, which is y. Does that make sense, y? And now the intersection of this circle and this circle is this point right here. Let's mark that point. This circle and this circle is that point right there. This point is y from this point and it's one from this point. And now we're basically done. Let's go to the polygon tool and let's build our polygon. So it's made up of our vertical distance of one, a horizontal distance of x or a, then this distance of one, then this distance of y, and then this distance of one. And this blue polygon is our figure. We can drag the a to make it look like the original given. Something about right there. Now we can clean things up a little bit by hiding all these circles. Make sure you don't delete the circles. That'll destroy everything, but you can hide them. We can go back up to the move button, click here, do the three dots, and then we can get rid of show object. And let's repeat that for the rest of the circles. We can also hide this point, and we can hide all the labels by doing the same thing, but instead of clicking on show object, you click on the show label, and that'll get rid of the label. And we can do that for all the labels. And now that all the labels are gone, let's enjoy our figure for a second. This looks a little bit choppy right now. We can smooth it out. If we click on it, go to settings, set the increment to 0 0.01, and that'll make it much smoother. There we go. Now you have a nice smooth transition. Does that look nice? And let's put it back to the given location. And then we can change the color by going to settings, click on color. And I think I went with a dark and it might've increased this a little bit. That looks pretty good. There is our figure. And now to see the measurements, you go down here to measure, and then we can see all these distances by clicking on them. So this side is the one that we had from before. This side is one, and this side is also one. And this side will be the X, which in this particular moment is 0.45. And this one is gonna be the Y, which would end up being 0.55. And then we can rearrange these. Let's put this one outside here. We can scoot this a little closer, move this right there. Now we have all the side lengths that move around. There's the edge cases. And last to show the area of the figure, we go back to measure, click on area, and we'll click on the polygon. And it shows the area and it gives all the letters. We can clean this up by going here, clicking on the move button, double clicking on the text, and we can get rid of this label. We can make it just say area equals and then hit okay. And now it just has the area equals one. So now when we drag this around, we can rearrange it a little bit. So now as we drag the A around, we have a smooth animation that shows us all the side lengths and the area of the figure. And it also shows the edge case where our pentagon changes into squares. Pretty exciting, huh? So that's how you make this animation in GeoGebra. How exciting. And if you wanna to try to make one of these yourself, you can do this one right here. It's a little bit easier than the one we just did. You need to make a rectangle that has a vertex in the midpoint of this side of the square, another vertex touching the left side of the square, and this vertex touching the top of the square. And you wanna make it so that you can move this rectangle and the square will still have those three points of contact. This is what it could look like. And as you move this point, you have a square that's gonna slowly grow and shrink, and it's gonna maintain these points of contact. And this right here is bisected. And this is made up of a bunch of circles that are all hidden. And I'll put together a video sharing how I made this one. Once I made the video, I'll include a link right up there. How exciting.